All right, so we're talking stopping the zone run with a 3-4 defense. Question number one. What are the issues if we line up in a 3-4 versus a, regardless how they're trying to run it, a spread-to-run zone team, a pro-style zone team, whatever it is, what are some issues we can immediately face if we're running 3-4 trying to stop a zone running team? With the 3-4, it's a very easy count. As you mentioned the zone count system in our intro. It's a very easy count. So if if I am three four and um or if, if I'm playing against coaching against a three four from an offensive standpoint, zero is the nose. So if I want to run zone, you know, either direction, it's gonna be the same guys that we're working on. Zero is the nose, one is the Mike backer two is the, is the defensive end three is the overhang of the outside backer uh, backside one, two. I mean, and then when you flip it, it's the exact same. So the three, four is very easy to identify. And you say, well, we're going to be slanting and stunting and moving. And that's great. You're not going to move far. Um, we're going to combo you. You know, we could combo the nose to the, to the wheel backer or combo the nose to the Mike backer um they're not difficult they're it's not difficult to pick up this interior um it's it's in fact very easy to pick up that interior uh and the fact that compared to everything else we have what's called a box call we use it primarily in pass protection but you have a you have a five on five right you have a uh we from an offensive standpoint, we don't call a three four. We don't try to figure out if you're if you think you're a three four or a five two. We don't try to we don't care. To us, it's a three two box. Three down linemen, two linebackers. Everything else will sort itself out, but we have a five on five. And so we make a box call and it's that big on big, you know, whatever. Um that is relatively simple to pick up. Uh so the the biggest issue it's and it's not an issue because you know we're sitting here talking about coach simple play fast win right the fact that it's simple doesn't make it bad um it's just the fact that yeah your base your base front is pretty easy for us to communicate uh and so and and to get five on five and we know who those five are every time you know, if you're in a three, three, it's five on six. Now we can work that. Now I can add in the tight end six on six and all of that. That's great. Um, great works great for us, but there's a little bit of uncertainty where those things are going. Uh, the four, three has fantastic blitz angles. I can move guys. And the four, three has a seven man box. The four, two, five has a six man box, very clear, clean six man box. So to me, the biggest issue is that. Um, the second big issue is from an inside zone standpoint, we like to run inside zone to the white side. And we talked about that in the previous episode. Right. White is the wide side. Red is the reduced side. So we look at which side's red and which side's white. The 3-4, assuming base 404 or 505, the 3-4 is a base double white meaning that i can run inside zone pretty happily to either side of your defense and we can work off of that nose and make our cuts and look for our cutbacks and if you're slanting um here's another weakness of the slanting front compared to a four two or a four three uh you know getting into Getting into two gap, I'll say the weaknesses are hard to teach, right? If you're if you're a great two gap teacher, that's great. We don't work with a lot of two gap. So when you're slanting, there's the issue of the fact that as a zone coach, I want to take you where you want to go. Well, you're moving. So I can use your momentum against you in that and say, if you slant too hard to the left, I'll just carry you on to the left. You want to go left? Let's go left. And now I'm going to take you even farther than you wanted to go, which is going to displace you, widen a gap to the inside. Right. Which is why with our 3-4 system, we teach to attack, strike 
the offensive lineman, uppercut through him, own the area, slant to a shade, and read off of him because we do not want to get washed in the zone. So five on five, big on big, uh, interior, that's a weakness. Um, double white side, that's a weakness. And um, against inside zone especially. Outside zone, zone doesn't care white and red. It's good either way. Um, now, if you're one of the, well, let me finish that, uh, double white, and then the fact that you're slanting, and so we can take you where you were headed, and we want to take you where you were headed. Take you where you want to go. That's fine. Want to go left? We'll go real far left. Um, if you're one of the teams that plays a soft OLB, you don't put those guys up on a tight end. From our standpoint, again, that's easy. Because Money. we don't have to reach you. You're going to widen yourself, and we're going to cut inside of you for outside zone standpoint. Um, we play our Sam backer normally down over top of a tight end, just like a forefront. And then we slant everybody else if right. you have a tight end. If you don't have a tight end, we're going to loosen him up, and he's going to, he's going to move around. He's going to do some stuff. Um, we do like it more against you know spreads. Uh, but obviously we put that guy, that stand backer down over top of a tight end and that now you have to read him and see what he's going to do. Uh, but if you play him soft outside zone can be an issue. So some big time you talked about there was, um, you know, the four, three is a seven man box four, two, five is a six that if they play CBR correctly, becomes a seven man box. Cause you try to run yeah, inside zone. You, right. And that backside dude is, in. is, is folding in. Right. So those Absolutely. are both seven. The best you can do in a three four is make it a six man box. That's if your outside backer is a great CBR guy, right? And then, yeah, if I've went spread to to run, I'm down a guy, um, but I'm also probably reading a defensive end somewhere in there, and so I've already reduced that. So now you went from a five to a four, so you're just back to a five man box. So we, right? It quickly numbers can get kind of out of control. Um, and then also just being able to combo like that's three, you know, you, you mentioned the count system again, but regardless of how you're doing it, you're talking, you know, head up to outside or head up to play side, that's your guy. And then, you know, the uncovered is just helping with the covered to, to his play side. That's great. All that doesn't matter how you do it. It's pretty darn it's, easy to get combos on three people, especially if you're bringing an H, a, a Y, anything back into your blocking scheme. But if you're just going, if you let's talk spread to, to run, um, that's a pretty light box. And I mean, we make a box call, like you've mentioned, and, and it's in your, some of your defensive stuff, or I'm sorry, your uh, pistol power offense. Hey baby, get where you're going. Let's go right now because they don't have enough people and, and we'll make one dude wrong and we'll block the other four and, uh, and we're off to the races. So I can see pretty quickly where um, without a absolute stud at free safety, you're hurting right now, right off the bat. So um, definitely it's something we'd have to overcome. We would immediately, uh, and this is how we initially installed the three, four as a change up front. We took a kid who could, who could tackle your quarterback in space. And we dropped him down opposite the running back against zone read teams, or excuse me, to the side of the running back, right. the side that the quarterback would be coming out. And we made him the read. And so we had five on five. Somebody's got to win a block. And then, of course, you, know, you have your free safety coming down. If we do a good job spilling, uh, you know, five on five isn't inherently a problem, but it's five on five. But like you said, you're not minusing us with the read. Um, and so what would happen now is if the, the quarterback is getting an automatic give read because he's just squatting, staring at the quarterback, we're playing open field tackle drill with that OLB. And then we're just trying to spill with the other five to the strong safety who's likely unblocked or the free safety who's coming down the alley. Um, that was That's the goal in that and the way we initially started using it um, to, to strengthen that up. But yeah, at its core, inside zone is a problem. So since we talked problems, um... Also, we have to talk fix like fixing those problems, right? I mean, that's because it's a podcast, and and we just told you that we're talking about stopping the zone run with three four. So, how do we fix those issues that we've highlighted here tonight? Do we want to do the advantages first? 
Sure. Get the advantages, then fix the problems. So it looks like because I don't want it to sound like a negative attack on the three four. For let's run the advantages. I, I just thought state problem, solve problem. But I like advantages. Let's run it. I, I think we just we don't want to wear down the three four guys. <laughs> three four guys, we're here for you. We love you. Yeah. What we're are the benefits of using three four versus zone run schemes? I think what we just talked about. Um, you know, the ability to drop that OLB down against inside against um against the uh um drop the OLB down against zone read teams to the backside and, and get a better athlete on that rather than having you know a defensive end or somebody being red. Right. But the slanting in the movement, you know, it really does when we talk zone schemes. From a zone scheme standpoint, uh, even with the count system, I teach my guys the covered uncovered rules, which is my nose to your nose, play side. If the guy is standing there, there's a 90% chance he's mine. If he's head up on me, there's a 50% chance he's mine. And if he's backside, there's a 10% chance he's mine. By having him head up, I can tell you all day that this is easy for our offensive linemen. It, it's not a problem, but it's not as easy as lining up and saying, that dude's going to be there when this ball is snapped and I've got him. Because I'm snapping, the ball is being snapped, or I'm snapping the ball as a center, and then you might be there and you're mine, or you might slant real hard and I might immediately be climbing to backer because you're gone. And I got to get that uncovered guy to overtake you, which means he's got to take a good flat step to get there. He's got to have the right depth and the right leverage. So by nature of disguise, offensive play caller system, defensive play caller system, we talk about, or excuse me, defensive play caller system. We talk about three levels of play call. We talk about base, movement, and aggressive by nature of the 34 front slanting you are in level two play calling all the time yeah there's no base there's no there's no base your base call there is because there's a call that you use all the time for us it'd be, it'd be an aim stud or aim smack or whatever call you want to use to, to bring this the sam into C gap because we're basically just moving back into a four, two, five look. That's our base call. We're going to be in that like 70% of the time, but, and, and, and the advantage of that is you might start to expect, Hey, that guy's head up on me. He's going left. He's going away from the strength. Right. And then he doesn't one play. We pinch, we go Toro, we go to the strength. Um, you also have some really nice blitz angles. Um, you have the ability to confuse with the slant. If you want to read my defensive end in a zone, or if you want to read off of my nose in your inside zone, or if you want to try to read off of my uh, my end or my SAM or something like that in an outside zone, we have the ability to move them quite a bit. Uh, you, you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of versatility in the three, four, in that you can call different stunts, different fronts, different slants, different movements. Uh, and you can be in places that pre-snap you were not. Um, if you take a four, three, and I run outside zone against a four, three, if you try to reach a nine tech defensive end, where is that nine tech defensive end going to go? He's going to stay outside. And so pre-snap, as a running back, I can look at that and I can go, I'm cutting it. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the handoff one, two, three. He's going to stay outside. I'm going to make the decision to cut four or five. I'm cutting C gap. It's going to happen over and over again. You as a defensive coordinator are going to have to make a call to echo him, cut him into C gap in order to make right. me do something different. Um, or blitz the Sam into C gap or something. In the four two five, we play it almost head up. But if you play a six I, very obvious where he's going to be. He's going to be inside. I'm going to end up going outside. I know that pre snap. With all the movement that we can do in the three four, 
I don't think that you get, I think both the offensive line and the running back, they don't get to look at the picture pre-snap and say, this is what's going to happen. And so that is an advantage. The versatility, the flexibility of the three, four uh, is definitely an advantage against your zone run scheme. You talk about the blitz angles. Um, I mean, I feel like that's a huge advantage because although we talked about counting the down linemen and counting that linebacker is pretty simple, right? And, and getting to our combos pre-snap is great. Um, but knowing they're slanting, that you're talking about a 14 to 18-year-old kid that's playing O-line. He's already started calculating whether that dude's going to be there or not. Is he going to go right? Is he going to go left? And yeah, I mean, we teach, you know, in zone three steps. If you don't reach him, get to back or go now. But we know we're going to get those kids to overstep it, right? Now I can almost get there. Or that dude hit me in the face. <laughs> and I right. expected to take three, three steps. Um, so just the D-line can make it a ruckus. But when we start talking blitz angles uh, and blitzes, those backers coming through, I can I can see pretty quickly where an old lineman can be kind of on overload with who's coming through his gap. Because now it could be, let's just say, a guard reaching a nose, a backside guard reaching a nose, right? And it could be him. It could be the backside linebacker. It could be the play side linebacker. It could be a free safety. Like there's all kind of people that can pretty quickly get into his gap. And so just being able to, that onslaught of unknowing. Um, yeah. That's, and you, you know, we don't have to outsmart the coaches, right? We just got to outsmart the kid on the field. So I think that's, when I start thinking about trying to block a front, um, even, you know, three, three stack, of course, is the next one that's even crazier, but um, a three front with all the movement is in some cases, but actually easier because in the three, three stack, pretty much those guys are going to work the, the adjacent gaps, right? That stack's going to work B gap, C gap. True. And what do we spend all of our time on in zone combo drills? We'll just work a stack. Yeah. So the that's three, true. three stack doesn't offer any, you know, I think that a more versatile, the three, four, this goes back to weakness. The three, four has the ability, has the problem of with all of this flexibility, I can get, I can get four different players playing force. So whereas in the three, three and in the four, two, five, um, and even in, even in the four, even in the four, three, I can use the same two guys as force you know, nearly 100% of the time. In the 3-4, if I'm going to be flexible and multiple and do all these different things, then strong safety, free safety, will backer, Sam backer are all hybrids. The Sam backer has to be able to play as a defensive lineman or an overhang safety. Yeah. The will backer has to be able to play as an outside linebacker or an overhang safety. The strong safety has to be able to play as a free safety or as an outside overhang, the free safety has to do the same. So, um, and then if you go too high, you know, that's they you can limit it more, but uh, you have a lot of different things happening. The trade off is the three, three is simpler to coach. The three, four is harder to identify for the offense. Um, I got a Jack backer, weak side, inside linebacker who could be going a gap strong, A gap weak, B gap weak, C gap weak. And none of them are particularly drastic calls. None of them are, you know, wild things for him to do. And you've got to identify them. You've got to figure them out. I can have two defensive ends slanting outside on a pass play, and I've got a really light box, but, I, but I've got a contained quarterback. And I can also have two defensive ends pinching the hell out of B gap and spilling your inside run, your inside zone. So I can go from essentially a bare front with a pinch to a very light pass contained, you know, pass rush type of deal. Snap to snap. I don't, you can't do that in, in most fronts. Not, not as, you can do it in the four three, but you've got to drop ends, and that's hard. Um, you can't do it in the four two five, not nearly as well. 
And you really can't do it in the 3-3. Three, three. But the, but those are simpler. 4-2-5 and 3-3 three, three are simpler. Um, you know, the 3-3, three, three, you don't generally have guys crossing over gaps. And they, they just work their stacks. So where does the tight front, um, we talk four eyes and a zero. Um, you know, the, the three, four coaches around me that I've talked to, because my question is always why. Why am I seeing so much five, two, why am, or, or tight front three, four? Um, why? Because I'm a four, two, five guy. I like four fronts. I like even fronts. I want to, every coach that luckily I've coached for likes four fronts, so we don't have to worry about it. But, uh, and they all talk about why well, I can spill everything. And, and that's kind of the name of the game of, of Joe Daniel football, right? When you start looking at defensive packages, I want to spill to a force guy and let Allie clean it up. So does that, does that, um, that tight front, that four eyes and a zero, is that even more of an advantage here? Because even your inside zone, like you're going to try to combo that dude, but that's another gap filled. So if you're going to hit the cutback, which, you know, a lot of us try to hit right off the, you know, the center's butt going backwards, or does that change that? I mean, am, am I changing your reads? Am I changing your cutback lane so extreme that now you're just, you're spilled backside? to that extra outside linebacker that no one's accounting for. What's the advantage of the four, three? Um, well, in my world, it's, um, I have players that could go to Miami. Sure. <laughs> the advantage of the four, three is in the defensive line. All everybody across the world in defensive line plays where? Well, it's a uh, over front, right? In it's an over front. Yeah, but more so than a four two, because the strong end is a nine, not a six. Right. Outside Everybody level. is in an outside shape. Yeah. So the most important thing that defensive linemen can do is spill a down block, squeeze and spill on a down block. You can't do that. I know we're talking zone, but if you can't do that, you can't play. the advantage of playing all across the board outside shade is spilling is very natural. He goes down inside. I come right down with him. How many outside shades do we have in a tight front? Uh, well, zero. Zero. And you don't even have anybody slanting to an outside shade. Now the center is, but the center, when the center gets a down block against the three, four front, guess what else he's getting? a down block from the guard next to him. So if he goes running down with the guard, with the center, the other guy's just hitting him in the back and taking him down. And that's part of the game. But we try to do that with the 3-4. The other guy's going slam outside, and he's coming down with it. So you can't down block necessarily, but I can't squeeze. Um, and so I think it's very, like, I mean, the obvious advantage of the 3-4 uh, uh, against the tight front is bringing in a tight end. You know, you're in trouble now. You and, and, and every tight front coach will tell you that. I don't want to be in a tight front against a tight end. Like, they like it against the spread. They like it because they watched a bunch of Big 12 football out there, and you guys can't play defense, and you don't know what oh, tight ends are. God. And uh, And so, well, don't worry. You're coming to the SEC. We're going to teach you. We're going to hey, lose a lot of football hey, games while you learn. But hey, we saw the opening season for Oklahoma, right? Things are going to, questions will be answered in 2024 for Sooners football. And uh, Georgia's not answering any questions until like December. December. Hey, Georgia gets Texas, man. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, Texas uh, is in for it, but you know, we'll see. That's, that's, that's another Yeah, we did. We, we, uh, no wonder Kirby was like, who cares if it's eight or nine? He knew, he must have known what the schedule was going to look like. And he's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We got Tennessee and this. Um, it was seeing the SEC championship. Um, so, yeah, like that, I mean, Texas. like, I don't dislike the tight front. I just think that this obsession with the tight front being the solution to everything, it's like, I'm going to bring a tight end in. Um, but, but that said, I, I don't think that it's some great solution to the issue. Like, are you going to spill everything? Aren't I just, I mean, I'm just going to combo that guy and combo him to your backer and like, maybe you spill it. Right. Um, 
you know, it's, it's nice. It's good. It's not the solution to all the world's problems. Yeah. Is the answer. All right. So we talked benefits. No, we did. We, we did. But second, we, did. Uh, we talked problems. We talked benefits. Let's talk about fixing some problems. Yep. So what are our fixes in the three, four? Uh, and, and you've already mentioned one was drop down an athlete. A dude, if you're going to try to read him, he's going to make you look stupid when he tackles your quarterback in the backfield. Yeah. Besides that, um, what are other fixes to the problems we mentioned earlier? Well, immediately you go to the, the concept of creating fronts that we have in our in our 33 and in our 3-4. Uh, and because of the fact that you can move guys around, I can look at this and say, what do I want to take away from you? Um, if you're an inside zone team, uh, if, you, if you are an inside zone team, then I might say, I want to force you to spill. In that case, a tight front or a pinch call, right? Again, it's not the solution to all the world's problems, but it's not a bad call. Right. So I can now go to, I can either pinch inside or I can line up in a four zero four, but normally we would, uh, you know, we would um, pinch rather than call the tight front, but you can do either. And so we would run our pinch call again, just to give that element of, you know, not just telling you what we're going to do. And then I could run, run something, uh, a bullet's weak or a bullet's strong or something. If, you know, if I run a bullet's weak and I'm saying, look, I'm closing off this area for you. You are going, we are trying to spill the ball. A gap, B gap filled both sides. So if I fill, if I fill up A gap, B gap, and now I'm going to spill you somewhere. My Mike Backer can sit back and read. He gets a pull, no pull, read, whatever it is. He gets a no pull read. He can go to fill and he's going to be scraping C gap. Um, he may be scraping, you know, in this, in this particular alignment that, that, you know, he may be gap solid because a gaps filled B gaps filled. Then if we have a tight end and my Sam backer is playing C gap, my Mike backer is gap solid. Um, you know, my weakness is backside for sure. Cause I'm my well backer, but, um, so, you know, I can do that. I can. I, so again, we said that these were strengths, but they're also weaknesses. I can load up the inside on you by calling pinch stunts. Um, in a passing situation, when I want to contain the quarterback, and I don't care as much about spilling everything, but I don't want to let your quarterback, I want come hell or high water, I want that quarterback to stay deep. You know, I could run an out stunt. That gives me no advantage against um, zone, but it gives me something against, against uh, you know, your quarterback trying to, to run. I can overload if you want to run outside zone. I can overload off tackle. And I can say, look, you do whatever you want, but off tackle is is closed. Um, and then I can do some twist game. I can get my outside linebackers coming inside very easily and causing some confusion in your zone. Uh, in your outside zone. So you're getting an immediate, uh, I'm giving you immediate reads because of the movement. If you're reading, and I'm not talking zone read, but I can do that too. But in zone game, zone in our offensive play caller system is a post-snap play call. No different than passing or running an option. Just a basic zone. I'm going to look at what you do off defensively and I'm going to make my cut. So if you try to to, to clamp off a gap, B gap, I can cut backside A gap, B gap, or backside C gap. Um, but you got to be able to do that. From a defensive standpoint, I can say you're not running outside zone this way, or you're not running inside zone inside. So I can use the creating fronts concept and say you like to run inside zone, you're not running inside zone here. Right. You like to run outside zone to the field or outside zone to your tight end. You're not going to get to do that here today. I have a lot more flexibility than the four two five to create weaknesses uh, or, or to, or to um, create weaknesses, to create fronts that take away your strengths 
and test you to see if you can now attack the weaknesses that I left open. Um, from a from a defensive play caller standpoint, you're in control. You're absolutely in control because you can do almost anything from this front. And that's an advantage that you don't have in a lot of other fronts because even though you can call a bunch of stuff, it's, you know, you, the 4 two, 5 it becomes a mess because it's not really built to be that way. The 4-3 is hard. The 3-3 three, three doesn't become a mess, but there's just not quite as much easy creativity again everybody's pretty much working their stack right uh in the three four it's it's wide open and it's not that complicated it's not that other than other than the four different guys being force or you know learning force and learning spill learning alley guys have to learn different jobs this gives you so much versatility and 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 if you're you know we talk about who should run what if you're a tinkerer, like you just can't leave well enough alone, and you know that, you don't want to coach in a four-two-five scheme, not as your base. No, because eighty percent of your calls are probably going to be run base. Yeah, like you're going to get bored. And if you're in a four-two-five and you're bored, you only have one option: break it. And that's not good. If you're in a three, four and you're bored and you want to tinker, you can do that every week and you don't have to break it. You just got to take more time to coach, coach guys up details. You got to have a little bit more attention to detail. I mean, the four, two, five, you're going to be better if you have an attention to detail than, than if you're not, but you can't, you can't just go out and go, wow, you know? So I have a question about, this is from the rookie coach and me. Are there any coverages? And since we're talking about fronts and run fits, are there any coverages that I can run in a three, four that benefit me against your zone scheme? Um, just because of location of personnel. I mean, just in general, you know, the ability to drop down to a three, uh, to a cover three. And, and not only drop down to a cover three, but, Add that extra defensive lineman in your Sam or your Will outside linebacker. I can slant strong, bring the Will, you know, the old slant angle stuff, right? I can slant weak across the front, bring Sam backer and C-gap. That's my base. Drop strong safety down to be force, play the flat. But I can also go Toro bullets, or Toro with a, with a whip, bring the backside Will linebacker. Toro slanting to the strength. Will linebacker coming from the backside edge. Same call, different look. Simple for the defensive lineman, right? Slanting right or slanting left is not going to confuse them. Will only has two jobs. I'm either force or I'm spilling coming off the edge as a defensive linebacker, as a defensive end, basically. So he's either going to play like a stand-up weak side end or he's going to play like an outside linebacker. The Sam is either going to play like a hand-in-the-dirt strong end or he's going to play like an outside linebacker and then of course i can pinch i can bring both of them right which is a double which is a double edge and you've got to know why you're doing it and what your purpose is but it's it's another option and um from a coverage standpoint though being able to run those two and run cover three behind it pretty pretty cool to to be able to really just completely flip your cover three and who's coming and who's going where. Uh, quarterback doesn't just get to look out there and go, a read off the road. And, and then with all of that, running a basic cover three and running it from a too high shell because strong safety, free safety are rotating all the time and they get good at that. Now my quarterback can't just sit there and look at it. My, my quarterback can't just go, he can't look out there, especially if he's in a, in a, in a spread. With a tight end, I may have to get that sandbacker walked up. We don't always walk the sandbacker up, put his hand in the dirt. But with a tight end, it, it forces me to define a little bit more what's happening here. If you go two by two, I can have the Sam and the Will kind of floating out there, three by three, five by five. And then on the snap, bam, one of them's coming off the edge, and he's coming. 
And you, I don't know what the read's going to be or who I should be reading because I don't really know who the end man <laughs> is until the time comes. Right. And that, that coverage ability helps a lot. You can do the same in a quarters. Um, in, a, in a quarters, you can adjust who's coming. Uh, you know, I can bring a Jack, I can bring Mike, I can bring Sam, I can bring Will. I just bring four and then everybody else is playing split field quarters coverage. I can do the exact same thing and cover one, but you know, to play man coverage, especially if you go two by two, I got to get somebody out there pretty quick. Somebody rot rotating over a little bit sooner. I can't just, I can't play man on the run. Um, great song, but can't do it as a defense. Man on the run. Yeah. Yeah. It's coach Chamberlain's pipes right here on the podcast. Yeah. Well, well you're showing them off. <laughs> anyway um all right so we answered the problems that we brought up um what did we talk about like where we can get you to a four man and sometimes a five man box is that just lining up it or blitzing it well, i mean blitzing it yeah we, we kind of mentioned it but yeah obviously you can blitz to Blitz to get you into, you know, bring bring five, bring four, bring four, bring five. We're always bringing four. We're always bringing somebody. It's never just right. a three man rush. Um, but yeah, we can bring five. We can, again, that goes into the creation of fronts. We talked about bringing the mic and the off off the edge, and um, so yeah, and rotation and lots of things that we can do. Uh, it's just the flexibility, the flexibility of the play calling, the flexibility of the blitzes. The only defense where I like the angles better is the four three. Um, but again, teaching high school kids to be a drop end in a zone blitz is difficult. Um, you end up with kids dropping because they think they're supposed to drop and here comes <laughs> outside zone running into strong end who's dropping off into coverage. Uh, so you really got to work your key reads. I mean, that's why the four three is beautiful, but you got to have the right coaching staff. Right. And you got to have the right and kid. We probably don't most don't most don't um but if you do it's awesome it's like one of those like let me get our feet wet with the 425 let me build a foundation the second year the third year let's go let's let's go everybody knows what's going on let's you know we can get wild here uh if anybody gets to stick around that long there you go it's not the case in my experience <laughs> awesome we've checked all the boxes <laughs> me either lately yeah. yeah talked a little shit along the way um, if you want to pay the bills, sir, we will start closing this thing out. Yeah, go check out JDFB coaching systems. We've been talking about our three four defense system. We've been talking about our uh the three three, the four two five, the four three, and all of those. If any of those intrigue you, along with the pistol power offense system, and obviously we've talked a bit about our zone blocking scheme. If any of those things kind of intrigue you and you want to know more about them, you can check it out by going to join joedanielfootball.com. Uh as as we talked about at the beginning. Uh, what separates JDFB premium coaching systems from all the other crap that's out there is two things. Number one is the ability to teach you how to do it uh, in a teach the details uh, of the scheme. It's not a playbook where lines are going somewhere. It's eyes are here, foot goes here, step here, fit here, adjust here. Here's the movement. Here's the thing. Here's the things to look for when you watch film, when you self-scout. Here's what you need to be fixing. We also will help you with the self-scouting too if you're a Platinum member. But also the second thing that we do that's better than anybody else is we simplify uh, so that coaches of any level can run it. And even if you're a coordinator and you're a head coach with 30 years of experience, the chances are your entire staff doesn't have that. Um, maybe you simplify only one position for that one guy, but we'll work on how to work around all of that. We talk about the things that are most important. Here's the things you cannot miss. Here's the things if a kid can't do it, he cannot play for you. And a lot of coaches miss that stuff. So we do a very uh, good job, great job, coaching the details and simplifying it. So check it out at join.jodanielfootball.com. You can access for a buck right now. <laughs>